Previously, we saw how to set the permission classes attribute of a Django REST framework generic view. And you can see that here on the user order list API view, we have permission classes set to is authenticated. And that means that only authenticated users can send requests to this endpoint and get back a valid response. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to target the newest endpoint that we added. And if we scroll up here, it was the product list create API view from the previous video. And the functionality of this view, it has two roles. So first of all, when a GET request comes in, it's going to return a list of the products in the database as a JSON response to the client. And the second role is when a POST request comes into that endpoint. This view class is going to handle creating a new product in the database and returning that 201 created response. Now what we're going to do in this video is learn how to customize permissions for this new view. And the reason for that is because when we send a GET request to get all products, let's imagine that anyone can send that request. But on the other hand, creating a new product in the database, we want to restrict that to only admin users. So only administrators can actually create a new product in the database. So we're going to need a permission for that purpose. Now we can't just add a permission class like we did down here because we have two distinct roles that that view is performing. And depending on whether it's a GET or a POST request, we want a different permission to be applied. So what we're going to do in this video is learn how to customize permissions using Django REST framework. Now we can actually write our own permission class, but there are other ways of doing it. And I want to look at this page here, and that's an overview of access restriction methods in Django REST framework. So there are three different methods to customize access restrictions on a case by case basis. So first of all, you can override the get query set method. We've seen that already. And this is going to limit the visibility of existing objects in the database. Now, when you override the get query set method or the query set attribute on the generic view, that can limit the objects that are going to be listed and the objects that can be modified and deleted. On the other hand, we have the permission classes attribute that we've seen before. And we also have a dynamic get permissions method that can also be used for these purposes. Now these perform general permission checks based on the current action, request and targeted object. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to override get permissions and we're going to look at the request action. Is it a get request to get a list of products or is it a post request to create a new product? So we can look at the request method for that purpose or the action type and we can then apply a permission based on that. So it allows us to dynamically alter the permissions based on what type of request it is. Now we can also override these permissions or the access restriction methods based on the serializer class as well. So for example, you can override get serializer here. Now what that's gonna do is, for example, on a post request, you might want to change the serializer that's used in that case than the one that's used for a get request. You can do that dynamically in the get serializer method on a generic view. We're not going to cover that, but we are going to cover get permissions. Now, what I want to do in this video is add the get permissions method. And we're going to add a request and we're going to move from doing this on the Django REST framework browsable API to using an extension in VS Code to send API requests. Now, the extension, the extension sorry, that we're going to use is called REST Client. So REST Client is available and it's free. And what this allows you to do, if we scroll down here, is it allows you to send HTTP requests and view the response in VS Code directly. And that's very useful, and I personally like that a lot because there's no context switching at all. You don't need to load up Postman or Insomnia. You can just stick to REST Client, you can stick to VS Code, and that's what we're going to do now. Now what we're going to do is add a new request, and to do that we can create a file here with a .http extension. So I'm going to create a file here called api.http, and we can add the request in here. So let's start with the GET request to the products endpoint. So we're going to send a GET request and I'm going to copy the URL here. So let me just copy that and paste it in here. So a GET request to this endpoint. And we're going to use HTTP and it's going to be version 1.1 of the protocol. Now we're running the Django server as you can see at the bottom here. If we actually send this request, let's see what happens. We get back a response on the right hand side and it contains all of the products in the database. So this GET PRODUCTS API request is returning all of the products and that's as expected because if we go back to our views.py file, so what I'm going to do is bring back the sidebar and let's actually just load up views.py. There are no restrictions whatsoever on this API view. So at the moment we can send that GET request. We can also send a POST request to create a new product and we saw that in the previous video and there's not going to be any restrictions on that at all. Now we can also create a product with a POST request to the same URL. So I'm going to copy this and we can separate these with a new line here 
and we're going to send a post request this time and in between the two request types we can add three hashes here and that's going to separate them and you can see we can now send that post request as you can see here now we need to send a body for this so this is not going to work if we hit send request what we're going to add here is a content type as you can see here we're getting some type hinting as well not type hinting we're getting some code intellisense and we can send an application slash json request so what we're going to send is a body here and we can send the body in curly braces like this now to create a new product we can paste some data in here so this is the post request it's going to have a content type of application json and then django rest frameworks view classes the request object can detect that that data that's incoming is json data and it can parse it using the serializer class on the view and that's the product serializer that we have here so we can send this post request and we're going to get back a response and the response as you can see has the http 201 created status code and we get the new products data coming back in the body of the response now the goal here is to say that when we actually send this post request we have to be an admin user for this to work not just any user but it has to be a django admin user so what we can do is go back to views.py and if we look at the other view class here and that was the user order list api view this permission class here was just is authenticated so anyone that's authenticated can get a response here but we want to take this even further with our new product create endpoint we only want admins to be able to create here so what Django REST framework has in its permissions module is another permission here and that's is admin user so we're going to bring that in and I'm also going to bring in another class from the permissions module so let's bring these onto new lines and the other one is going to be the allow any permission and as you can imagine the allow any permission is going to allow any kind of request from any kind of user to be accepted by the Django REST framework view class now what we can do is go back down to this view here and we can now override that method. So it's going to be get permission and that's pluralized get permissions it should be. And at the bottom we can return the call to the super class method. So that's the list create API view method. But in between that we're going to perform some actions here. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to set self dot permission classes and we're going to set it by default to allow any. So we're going to allow any kind of request to come in by default but then we can check the request method. And you can get access to the REST framework request object using self.request. And just like the Django request object, that has a dot method property. And we can check if the method is equal to a post request. Now what we can do if it's a post request is we can copy this line of code here. And we're going to bring that into this if statement. And we're going to change the permission class in that Python list. So instead of allow any, we can use is admin user, which we also imported. So the effect of overriding get permissions here is that we set a default permission class of allow any and then if it's a post request we are modifying that and we're setting it to another list here that contains the is admin user permission. So rather than just having permission classes as a field that's set to a static value here or list of values, what we're doing is we're actually overriding get permissions and then we can do some dynamic checking of the request object. And then we can change the permission classes based on the request properties. So now that we've added that, I want to save views.py and I'm going to close that. And we're going to test the get and the post request again. Now when the get request comes in here, we expect to see the same response. So let's try that out. And we still get back the data because on a get request, we have the allow any permission. And that's going to allow the request and it's going to send back the response containing these products. But on the post request, on the other hand, let's try this and we can see the response here. It's got the HTTP status code of 403 forbidden. And if we scroll down, you can see the response contains this key called detail and the authentication credentials have not been provided. So now the client will know that and they will have to amend their code to actually get those credentials if they actually have access to those credentials, that is. But in a nutshell, if we go back to views.py here, the basic premise here of this get permissions method is to limit the people that can send the post request and make sure that only admins can create products in the database. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to actually move on to JWT or JWT authentication and how to integrate that with Django and Django REST framework. And we're going to send this post request here that we added to our .http file. We're going to send that with a JSON web token that's going to contain authentication details and allow Django to understand who's sending the request and then verify that that's actually an admin user. You can do that, as you're going to see in the next video, with another HTTP header, and that's the authorization header. We're going to see that in the next video.
But that's going to be just about all for this video. Before I finish, I just want to note one other benefit here of having a .http file and using the REST client that's built into VS Code. You can actually send some of these requests to your GitHub repository as long as you're not exposing any sensitive information. And that can then be shared with your other developers and that can be used when testing your APIs. So that's one benefit of having REST client and using these types of files. So that's all for this video. If you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page we have in the description. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel, that would be amazing as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video about JWT authentication and Django REST framework.